What's up, tubers? What's going on? Uh, this video is about scratching that scalp and having scratch abrasions. Now, this client does not have scalp abrasions, but I still want to talk about that. And pretty much when I get that client in, especially when you want to start a lot, or I've never seen you before, I need to analyze your scalp to make sure that you don't have any issues, you don't have any bumps, you don't have, you know, too much going on. So pretty much what I do is I go through the hair and I part through and I get really close and you can see, you know, what condition at that point the scalp is in. You can see what's going on, pretty much what you're working with and what you have. Uh, a number of those clients that are pretty much scratch, 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 scratch. You form scalp abrasions, that scalp is really dry and they form an abrasion sometimes on its own too depending if you have like allergic reactions or different things of the sort also so you can be careful on that level um, scalp abrasions can go very very far you can start off with just a little small scratch put in different greases chemicals especially those that relax and put in a whole bunch of other stuff or you product hoarders you guys can also have a lot of issues with those also getting into those little corners especially like back here along that that neck that's what we all get in we just be getting it in just mm, right there and over here on this side too and in the crown area that's pretty much where i've seen them to exist so be be cool did you say i was whining did you say i was whining hold on, hold on, hold on. no blanca don't take your hair down now <laughs> you still look like blanca flores no i was Shake that neck, your Bombay. Shake it. Shake it. Yes. Now put your hair back up. She got an H in her her. She got a H U H H R her. <laughs> but back to like I was saying. Um, so be be mindful of that. The way to heal this capillation is pretty much putting a small amount of medication on it. You kind of want to leave that area away from too much oiling or too much of like greases and bases a whole bunch of those things that have different things in them to make up that solution that can get in there and cause an infection um just and also like say for instance if you're already locked and you have a scalp abrasion say for instance if you were locked here and the scalp abrasion was on the side of this lock i would not twist this lock tightly at all I, if anything i would kind of just shy away from it I, I would keep it to where the presence was decent and the client is satisfied but i would not put too much tension and too much pressure on that lock because I promise you, it's, it's going to hurt the head, it's going to hurt the scalp, it's going to do a number of things over time. So, that is a no-no. Those of you that are just getting in your head and taking both of those hands and just, just, just scratching like that, that don't do it. I understand that feels good. I understand that you want to just get in there. But, by the time you realize why you're scratching that hard what you're doing what happened you've just made it worse so to to help you with that i wouldn't scratch that deep i would find a solution to try to balance back out my uh my itching because that itching is because of dryness it's because of a number of things so be careful on that level because that's actually a no no <sighs> Today has been a long day. I have been at it since early this morning. I mean, I love what I do, but I just had some folks coming in and doing some things. But one thing I did learn today is I had a client that came in, and other folks was like, oh, she, she asked a lot of questions, and she get on my nerves. She didn't get on my nerves. Every question she asked me, I answered. And uh, everything she asked me, I pretty much thought that that's what she wanted, and that's what I gave her. So for all of yous, that come in and don't ask questions somebody in my conversation again so for all of you that come in and don't ask questions and, and don't pretty much understand what the stylist is going to be doing to your head at that point in time it's it's i can say that it's one going to be your fault on the end if you did not figure out what you were getting yourself into you cannot be mad at that stylist, but partially you could because they should ask questions as well. But both of y'all should be on a knowledgeable level of what's going on in your head. You don't just sit in anyone's chair and then get up and say, okay, well, she told me to just go home and keep retwisting this and it's going to stay. Mm-mm. That, that don't work. 
so before you go in decide what you want to work with decide part of your outcome decide where you want to be and and really understand what's going on if you're in a chair and your client I mean your, your stylist is maintenance in your hair and it's too tight and you're starting to have pain and you're not that tender head ask her to stop so let's say say uh him shim whatever high heel wearer calm down for me you hurt my head a little bit and styling does not take that much I'm, I'm you know some of us get braids or whatever but it's not that serious it's really not and like so just understand that there are different varieties to this it's not just one way you can do whatever you want however you want you know and, and make it work so that's cool another thing I want to talk about is those that are using a bunch of ponytails and a rubber band mm, 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 mm. it's it's the rubber bands that come on UPS packages don't use those those can get in the hair the hair can tangle up around that very easily and that can come out and another um, while I'm thinking of this and while I'm saying this I seen that some people are using the rubber bands to do their lock maintenance uh -uh. that doesn't work pretty much either because what you're doing is you, you're not really holding those hairs into place and training them like they need to be you're just kind of throwing them into the rubber band and then after you take them down um, it's not really giving it a good hold but hold on one second for me but yeah YouTube we were just talking about Houston Texans no offense to anyone but if you own lime green shoes, lime green pants, and a lime green shirt, please do not wear that together. Please, please, please. God, please. But that's that's all I got to say. Um, one thing I want to talk about is the fundamentals of hair and locking. Um, yeah, everybody want a good hold, a fast hold, a sufficient hold. But your hold is gel based. That's not sufficient. That's microwavable. That that don't work. Um, and it's not to, to say anything against anyone or anything, but like those products pretty much don't really offer a good hold like necessary. Yeah, on the back it says it's full of protein. I'm, I'm, yeah. But you know, too much protein can take you back out too. It's like over processing that hair. Um, I, I try to find a good reason, and I've asked a number of stylists, even ones. I'm not too keen about. I've even asked them they're feeling on waxes and, and all of this. And nobody can give me good logic. Nothing that I would say, oh, okay. I can see that. I can understand that. Not on any level. Wax in the hair. It's like putting wax on your fingers and just walking around out day outside. It doesn't really serve a purpose. It, it's going to get you pretty much to hold the hairs together and contain them. But in the long run, you won't have any hair anymore because the wax is not allowed the hair to breathe. It does not allow a good sufficient hold that's necessary for hair styling and hair maintenance, nor does it uh, offer any moisturization or any other things that hair needs on a decent regimen. So for you, or those of you that are, you know, you're seeking different products, you're seeking different things, make sure that you look for moisturization, you look for something that's going to allow versatility, longevity, and something that's easy for you to use since you're a do-it-yourselfer and sitting at home, you know, looking for results in the mirror. Don't, don't just product hoard. Don't have a bathroom full of products, a countertop, and then, you know, when it's too shiny, you take your baby powder and put it in your brush and brush your hair. I'm sure Justin Johnson didn't make it for that reason. So, Hater. don't do that. Hater? Right. That's because Shabambe does it. Um, anyway, like I was saying, Oh, what's another thing I wanted to touch on? Um, free forming. For those that are free forming, I think that's a really good thing. I wouldn't say everybody should do that because everybody don't have the texture to do such a thing. But free forming locks are pretty much, those people have their locks for a longer period of time because they're not pulling on them. They don't tug on them. They're not doing anything to them. They're allowing that hair to grow and be that hair. Um, free formers, a lot of times, though, have a lot more individual individuality than others, in which that is highly respected by I me. Mean, highly. Because that is pretty much what you want, and you know yes, that's what you want. And I think that's very awesome. But still with free forming, I think that should be a good shampoo regimen, condition regimen, 
good. Make sure that you oil on a decent oh, no. level and a good okay, basis. Okay, I'm sitting here looking at it. I put it in my And body just it. make sure that you uh, okay, offer it'll yourself, you know, with free forming okay. what's necessary. And <laughs> I wouldn't right. really dry, like air dry a lot of times. I know a lot of people would like to do so, but like leaving a wet towel after getting out of the shower, how it holds that smell, your hair would do the same thing from just air dry free forming. Uh, sometimes that air, especially down here in Houston, sometimes that air drying after just you know shampooing that hair with the, the hard water out here, it would dry and tighten that hair just like like a ball. Like I got the knockback to where you put water on my hair and it it's gonna have a mighty Aphrodite going on, just like a fist of love, you know, it's gonna hold tight to a curl. But you know, again, free forming in for everybody. So just make sure that even though with those things, you want to do a good condition, shampoo, maintenance, and make sure that you understand what you're working with and what you have going on. Um, uh, let's see, what else? I wrote a number of things down that I wanted to touch on. See that sheet? That's pretty me. But that's pretty much it. Oh, force locking. Those of you that want to force your hair to lock. Uh, I'm not really keen on that. I'm not I'm not really just caught up on, on the forcing of the hair. Because you really don't have to force it to do anything. It's going to do what it's going to do regardless. Your only reason for being there is to make sure that the maintenance goes well. To make sure that the outcome is decent. To make sure that you can analyze the scalp, the hairs, and everything on that level to a decent format. So, force locking, just throwing everything in there. He said, okay, I'm going to wait for it to do its thing. It's not going to do a thing. Hair lotions. I don't understand hair lotions. What, what do you lotion? Like your hair is ashy. Like, what does the hair lotion do? What, what is that purpose? Help me understand that one. So, but how would that help? Do, on a level of common sense and integrity, how would that help? You think that would help a lot for natural hair in some aspect? That's it. You can come in and have a seat. Dust magnet? <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I could definitely like honey. It would be like a, a magnet for stuff because honey will get into the head and just hold on to everything. 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 So I wouldn't really force lock. I wouldn't just really throw everything into the head just to get, you know, the lock look. I would use my curl patterns as every if you're African American, every African American pretty much has some level of a curl pattern. Uh, Hispanic or any other origin, I'm sure you have somewhat of a curl pattern. If not, we can make you something happen on those different textures of hair, but those are different and those people really don't need too many products. I can use a tool and make you guys go. Just that simple. Um, something else. Burning that hair. Like putting a bunch of colors and, and a bunch of stuff in, and then your scalp is showing. And now you want to say, Oh, well, I'm gonna grow my hair back out, so let me go ahead and lock it up real fast. Mm -mm. That's not a good balance to that. Figure out what that hair needs first, and then grow it out first. Give it at least six months, especially if your hair is over processed, burned, you know, a mess. But it's not gonna grow in what you just slamming it into twist and it barely is there. You you won't be satisfied. And then if the hair is going to go back and you start it with the little twist that you have left from the over processing, once the new hair is coming in, it's not going to be an even consistent hairstyle. It's not going to be an even look. And then that's why a lot of times, a lot of people go and cut it off. It's fine. I would probably suggest that anyway and just sometimes start over. Especially when you have cause, you know, cause and effects of the sort. But the hair will grow back as long as you take care of the body. The hair will produce itself you will and then the hair and scalp and nails. Well not the scalp, but the hair and nails will just continuously, continuously, continuously grow. Uh, in in the hair part of locking, what really makes it lock up very, very well is when the, the hair has room to hold on to the shit of hair. So, one thing I always advise is making sure the hair is long enough. Like, you can see this hair is long enough. And Ron started out clean scalp. He was rolling 
a comb over his scalp just to give him some twists. But it grew out in a matter of months. And now you see he, he's just full head. It's shiny, it's grown, it's not all thick. The ends just come straight through. And some of the other videos you can see don't have to rake at some folks' ends. We don't know none of this situation. Just like slide straight on through on the comb. And that's that's the good part of it. That people like Blanca Flores. Is he talking about me? You gotta get them in. Okay, turn this way, Linda. You can come over here. It's a Shara show right now. Ooh, wee. That's the new Wendy Williams. Just take over the moment. Since Damien wants to talk, so he must want you guys to see me today. So, HoustonWeeds.com is in the building, working. You know, it's past 6 o'clock, the end of the world moment. Remember the club came on national TV talking about it's about to be the end of the world? I haven't watched the news yet, so I hope he didn't blow nobody up. But we're still here working. It's past 6. You know what I'm saying? We knew this was going to happen. It's supposed to be 6 p.m. It was. It was supposed to be going down at 6 p.m. I it's think he just wanted viewers on YouTube. Yeah, it's about 7 something in this camp. 7 p.m. Thanks, so, celebrity. We're here making it happen. But what I wanted to talk to you about anyway is, guys, you know what I'm saying? I feel you. This is why, you know what I'm saying, you don't want a guy to do your dreads. You know what I'm saying? Because they're haters. You know what I'm saying? They're haters. If your hair is thinning, Come to Damien. Let him lock that up. You know what I'm saying? I know you guys saw the video before where he snatched out his client's lock. <laughs> yeah. Come to him. He'll take care of you. You know. But, you know, since he wanted me on the camera, you know, I guess I'll show you some of my work. Doing a weave over here. Very nice and neat. Getting it done. He's attention whoring. I'll let him have the camera back. But HoustonWeeds.com is in the building in Houston, Texas. <sighs> That's all I have to say. So we damn just wanted me to have the camera, so I took it. But anyway, she wanted some YouTube views too, just like the, the uh, renegade dude. Mm -hmm. But check me out for more. I just wanted to show you some things. Damien. Huh? What's your YouTube name? Dirty yeah. Waters? What's the... <laughs> yes. What's your YouTube name? That's that's the YouTube, Dirty Water. <laughs> Trudy Locks? Blanca, didn't you come from Dirty Water to get over here? <laughs> <laughs> you Mexico border crosser. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Houston Natural Hair <laughs> and Locks. That's the name of the channel. Um... Check me out for more. I have more information, more insight I want to put on that. Check out my girl, Maisha. She come on time. She got the little micro locks. I'm sure. And she did her thing. <laughs> Lovely. Love in the game. She come all the way from, what school you go to? a and It's called Integrity. She don't want to talk. <laughs> That's decency and integrity. I love it. I love it. Get your education, my people. Get educated. And check me out for more. He's going to be a newbie in a little bit, so we're going to introduce him to the game in just a little while. Peace.